So there are three omega-3 fatty acids. You have ALA, EPA, and DHA, and all of them are critical to human health. So plant foods like flaxseed, chia seed, walnuts, they are all very high in omega-3 fatty acids, but specifically the omega-3 fatty acid ALA. So they're very high in ALA and vegans cannot easily obtain direct sources of the omega-3 fatty acids EPA and DHA. However, our bodies can convert ALA to EPA and DHA, but the conversion rates are quite low. During a recent podcast episode that I recorded with Derek Simnitz, we spoke about omega-3 intake and he asked if I knew how much ALA was required to get enough EPA and DHA in our diets. With the conversion rates, did you look to see how much, uh, if you were to take like two tablespoons of flax or whatever, with the, with the single digit conversion rates, does that provide you with enough? So how much ALA do you need to consume from flaxseed, chia seed, walnuts, and other high ALA plant foods to get enough EPA and DHA? And so I went through, I did all the calculations and I told him that I would get back to him. And in this video, we're gonna run through all the calculations that I did and I'm gonna share what I learned through that process. So let's talk about the recommended daily intake of ALA. So the recommended daily intake for ALA is 1.6 grams per day for men and 1.1 grams per day for women recommended daily intake of ALA is higher for women who are pregnant or lactating. And when it comes to the best foods for getting ALA, flaxseed has more ALA per calorie than any other non-supplement plant food, so we are going to use flaxseed to determine how reasonable it is to consume adequate intakes of all three omega-3 fatty acids from whole plant foods alone. So let's begin by determining how much flaxseed you need to eat to hit the daily recommended intake of ALA. ALA is very easily absorbed by our bodies. In fact, our bodies absorb over 96% of dietary ALA that we consume. And one tablespoon of ground flaxseed contains 2.3 grams of ALA. So men need 0.7 tablespoons of ground flaxseed to get their recommended daily adequate intake of 1.6 grams of ALA, and women need 0.5 tablespoons of ground flaxseed to get their recommended daily intake of 1.1 grams of ALA. So now that we know how much flaxseed you need to be consuming to get enough ALA in your diet, let's talk about DHA and EPA. So in healthy young men, approximately 8% of ALA can be converted to EPA and 0 to 4% of ALA can be converted to DHA. In healthy young women, the conversion rates are slightly higher, which is thought to be the result of higher estrogen levels. Women can convert approximately 21% of ALA to EPA and 9% of ALA to DHA. Now there is no recommended daily intake of EPA and DHA. However, general recommendations from nutritional authorities seem to range from 200 to 500 milligrams of DHA plus EPA per day. The American Heart Association even recommends consuming 1,000 milligrams of DHA plus EPA per day for people with heart disease. And a 2015 study found that taking a daily algae-based supplement containing 250 milligrams of EPA plus DHA per day enabled vegans to exceed an omega-3 index of 4.4, which appears to be a level that supports optimal brain health. So let's say that our target for EPA and DHA intake is 250 milligrams per day. Although the optimal split for EPA and DHA is undefined, we are going to call it 50-50 for the simplicity of our calculations. So for the average adult man, our goal is to consume 1,600 milligrams of ALA, 125 milligrams of EPA, and 125 milligrams of DHA every day. So to get the 125 milligrams of EPA per day, assuming an 8% conversion rate from ALA to EPA for men, we need to consume 1,263 milligrams of ALA. To get the 125 milligrams of DHA, assuming a 4% conversion rate for men, which appears to be charitable, we need to consume 3,125 milligrams of ALA per day. So the total daily required intake of ALA for the average adult male to consume all of the omega-3 fatty acids that they need every day for optimal health would be 5,988 milligrams, which is about 2.6 tablespoons of ground flaxseed. 
Now, this is about 150 calories of flaxseed per day, which is going to be difficult for some men to fit into their daily nutrition. So maybe you don't really like the taste of flaxseed, in which case you could have chia seeds or walnuts or another high ALA food, but that's still a lot of calories to be consuming, especially if you are following a calorie deficit and your goal is fat loss. So that's a lot of flaxseed per day. So it is possible to do that, but it might not be reasonable depending on how much uh, calories you have to work with. For the average non-pregnant and non-lactating adult woman, their goal is to consume 1,100 milligrams of ALA, 125 milligrams of EPA, and 125 milligrams of DHA every day. So to get the 125 milligrams of EPA, assuming a 21% conversion rate for women, they need to consume 595 milligrams of ALA per day. To get the 125 milligrams of DHA, assuming a 9% conversion rate for women, they would need to consume 1,389 milligrams of ALA. So the total ALA intake needs for the average adult woman per day to satisfy their ALA, EPA, and DHA needs would therefore be 3,084 milligrams of ALA, which is about 1.3 tablespoons of ground flaxseed for adult women. So please know that this is about 75 calories per day of flaxseed that you would have to be consuming to get all of your ALA, EPA, and DHA needs for the average adult woman. So depending on your nutrition plan and how many calories you have to work with, that might be reasonable, but it might also be difficult. So that's something to keep in mind as you're trying to plan out your nutrition. All right, so now that we know how much flaxseed you need to be consuming every single day to get all of your omega-3 intake needs, um, I want to read an excerpt from Dr. Michael Greger's website. He is the founder of nutritionfacts.org, and he wrote an article regarding the potential benefits of taking a DHA EPA supplement for vegans. So he wrote, quote, Having sufficient long-chain omega-3s, EPA, and DHA may be important for preserving brain function and structure, but what is sufficient and how do we get there? The Framingham study found what appears to be the threshold value around an omega-3 index of 4.4, which is a measure of our EPA and DHA levels. Having more or much more than 4.4 didn't seem to matter, but having less was associated with accelerated brain loss equivalent to about an extra two years of brain aging, which comes out to about a teaspoon less of brain matter. So it's probably a good idea to have an omega-3 index over 4.4. The problem is that people who don't eat fish may be under 4.4. Nearly two-thirds of vegans may fall below 4.0, suggesting a substantial number of vegans have an omega-3 status associated with accelerated brain aging. Phase 2 of the study gave algae-derived EPA and DHA to those eating vegan diets with levels under 4.0. About 250 milligrams a day took them from an average of 3.1 over the threshold to 4.8 within four months. This is why I recommend everyone consider eating a plant-based diet along with a contaminant-free EPA and DHA supplement to get the best of both worlds. Omega-3 levels associated with brain preservation while minimizing exposure to toxic pollutants. So the bottom line is that vegans should aim to consume about one tablespoon of ground flaxseed per day to get their recommended daily intake of ALA, or they can get that ALA from walnuts, chia seeds, or another high ALA plant food. In addition, they should also be consuming an algae-derived supplement containing about 250 milligrams of EPA and DHA per day. So after I recorded that episode with Derek, I went through all these calculations and I sent him all of my information that I came up with. And he said in a follow-up email that he felt like he had downplayed the importance of omega-3 supplementation. And he just wanted to make it clear that omega-3 supplementation was definitely something that vegans should consider. So I want to say a big thank you to Derek for having this conversation with me in the first place, talking about omega-3 supplementation, and then encouraging me to look into the research and actually calculate some of these numbers. It was a really fun topic to explore, and I learned a lot through the process. So if you enjoy watching this video, please be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can get a ton of other vegan nutrition information. And I would love to hear what other kinds of vegan nutrition questions you have. So please let me know in the comments, and I look forward to reading those. So thanks so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.